Captain, did the indigenous life forms see you? No, Mr. Spock, they did not. The Prime Directive clearly states there can be no interference with the internal development of alien civilization. Oh, no, that says, which is why if you're a Star Trek fan like me, then you know what the Prime Directive is. Prime Directive is a law that a human visiting alien planets must follow. And the law states that humans are prohibited from interfering with the internal and natural development of alien civilizations. Now this seems like a very noble and reasonable law that highly intelligent beings would follow. It may even be something that all highly evolved and intelligent beings would follow. If this is the case, then a super intelligent being that might visit Earth to study its inhabitants could be here utterly without anyone's knowledge because they may be prohibited to interfere with our natural development. We could be in a fishbowl and not even know it. The technology of these beings could be so advanced that we could be going on with our daily lives with no interference and have no idea that we're being watched and studied. We may even be taking part in their experiments and not know it. Is this possible? Could the Earth be infested with aliens from another planet and we are completely blind to it? The shocking answer coming up right now. Could a large alien ship be hiding somewhere in outer space, undetected by us? Let's say they had some kind of cloaking technology, such that they could not be seen. This is not that difficult. Astronomers can only see things in the sky that either reflect light or emit x-rays, infrared, radio signals, or some other kind of electromagnetic radiation. An advanced race could probably easily disguise these signatures. For example, it wouldn't be that difficult to create an object that is completely non-reflective, that looks black against the background of black space. Even we humans could create something like this with current technology. But then you have to think, how would such a ship of aliens get here? They could not have come from our own solar system. We know the planets in our system well enough to know that there are no advanced civilizations on the other planets we're familiar with. They would have had to come here from another star system. But even the closest star system is four and a half light years away. So to make such a trip, they would need to travel very fast, something that is close to or a large fraction of the speed of light. But anything that travels even close to the speed of light would need to expend a lot of energy. For example, to accelerate a motorcycle to one tenth the speed of light would take the energy equivalent of 10 hydrogen bombs. We humans would have detected this kind of energy signature and would see such a ship coming. You might say, well, maybe they have warp technology or faster than light technology where they can bend space, but this would require even more energy, several hundred hydrogen bombs worth. We would have detected this with our telescope, so this likely did not happen either. So the idea of large alien ships orbiting the Earth or hiding behind the sun or the dark side of the moon is unlikely. Now, one of the presumptions we may be making is that these alien creatures look a lot like us. Most aliens you see in the movies and on TV look a lot like humans with two arms, two legs, two eyes, a mouth, just with a bigger head. This is just a projection of our human point of view. We have no other reference point. It is highly unlikely that this is how aliens would actually look. Alien creatures would have evolved in a completely different manner in a completely different environment that may be nothing like Earth's. In fact, they may look so different from us that we may not even recognize them as life forms. What if these intelligent aliens are on a different size scale? What if these aliens are drastically smaller than us? Bacteria and viruses are life forms so small that we can't detect them except with the most powerful microscopes. What if the aliens were a thousand times bigger than bacteria? That would still be about the size of a grain of sand. We could probably not even see them, even if a hundred of them were in our house. But can intelligent beings really be so small? Well, if the beings were based on DNA or similar biology as Earth, then the answer is no, because the amount of processing power needed and the number of brain cells needed to be highly intelligent would not fit on something the size of a dust particle or a grain of sand. But alien life could be completely different, maybe based on silicon, for example, and using quantum computing-like technology. If that's the case, then it is conceivable that the brain power of a human brain or even higher intelligence could fit on a grain of sand. In that case, their ships might be so small and with such a small heat signature that we might not detect them at all. The other thing that we presume about aliens is that time passes for them like it does for us. One second for us is a very short time. But if you think about it, our sense of time and our time frame has evolved based on the rotation of the Earth. 
Our animal ancestors evolved to find food and mate during the daylight hours determined by the rotation of the Earth on its axis. That is the time we had in one day. It is possible that on an alien planet that revolves much faster than Earth, the living beings may be operating on a completely different time scale. For example, one second could be the equivalent of one minute for them. What if one second was like a day for them? What we consider a short period of time may be very long for them. They could observe us, study us, maybe even probe us and be on their merry way in a timescale so short that we would not even know that anything hit us. Could such aliens be in our midst? If they were here, what clues would they be leaving behind? Everything leaves a signature of some sort. Could we find such signatures? I guess it depends on if we knew where to look. If the aliens really were that small, they would still need to be mobile and moving from one place to the next to examine people and the rest of Earth. This movement would require some kind of energy expenditure. These things probably would not travel like dust particles undetected. To be efficient, they would need to move fairly fast. Such a movement would probably leave a light or heat signature. But being so small, it would be visible only if we were paying attention to it or if we were using some kind of detectors. The one inescapable truth is that these tiny aliens would have to get here from very far away. And if their ships traveled very fast at close to the speed of light, even something the size of a grain of sand traveling at such high speeds would leave an electromagnetic signature of some sort in outer space that we would detect. But if the craft was traveling at slower speeds, something like one-tenth the speed of light, the only signature could be microwave radiation. This is something we would not detect unless we were specifically looking for it. But at these slower speeds, it would take them 50 to 100 years to reach us from the closest planet. To give you an idea, the fastest speed our spacecrafts have ever traveled, like the Voyager 1 spacecraft, it would take 60,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri, the nearest star. At one-tenth the speed of light, it would take 45 years to reach us. So what's the bottom line? Are aliens here? The most feasible scenario is not aliens, but alien probes that are small enough to go undetected and not fast enough to leave a sizable energy or gravity signature in space. This makes sense because this is the kind of thing that we ourselves are likely to do if we ever wanted to reach out to other star systems like Proxima Centauri, the closest star to the Sun. If we were serious about reaching other stars, we would not send one ship with humans to an unknown destination. We would most likely send out hundreds of small probes in all directions in order to cover as many nearby stars as possible looking for other life. And these probes would likely be very small to keep costs down and also so that they could go at really high speeds without using too much energy. Using ion drive technology, for example, our probes could reach speeds of 90 kilometers per second, which is three times faster than the fastest vehicle ever created by man, the Voyager 1 spacecraft. This would still take 20,000 years to reach the nearest star. But NASA also has an experimental new drive called EM, or electromagnetic drive, which has the potential to reach much higher speeds, about one-tenth the speed of light, and may be able to reach Alpha Centauri in 50 to 100 years. So if we extrapolate this to our alien neighbors, it's quite conceivable that small probes using this kind of EM or similar technology could be headed our way, or already be here. They would leave only microwave signatures that could go undetected. But the big thing to understand is that it would likely not be biological creatures that come here or any kind of creatures that look anything like what you see in the movies. It would more likely be AI or artificial intelligence probes. But these probes with AI could be just as intelligent and conscious as biological creatures. Within 40 years, we will likely be able to build artificial life forms that have the brain power and even consciousness of human beings. These would be ideal for space travel over long periods of time because they would be immune to aging, wear and tear, and other effects of space. They could probably just put themselves in sleep mode, like you put your computer in sleep mode, and simply wait until they reach their destination. Is it possible that these things are here now? I have to say, from a science perspective, the answer is yes, it is possible. What would be the purpose of such an exploration? You have to think, would we do such a thing, and if so, why? I think we would do such a thing if we had the technology and resources to do it. Why? Because we're curious explorers, because we want to see what else is out there. It would not be to conquer them or use their resources. That's just silly. It would be to know more about the universe we live in. It would be the idea of learning more about our own evolution and how it compares with the rest of the universe. 
we live in a tiny, insignificant, pale dot that can barely be seen from our own distant planets. To know that we found another such dot in the universe may give our own existence some significance, some hope. We may find purpose for the seemingly meaningless yet awesome power of human intelligence that has evolved on our planet. We would do it if we had the means, motivation, and resources to do it, and so would our alien neighbors.